Japan 2.0. Uh, nice to meet you, and、uh, thank you for listening to our, our wonderful podcast. This is Japan 2.0.、Um, it's the sound of the party getting started. Yeah, it's the sound of the party getting started. It's a conversational podcast.、Mm. Um, yeah, it's a podcast about Japan and about、um, Japanese culture. Japanese culture. And another side of Japan,、uh, the, the side of Japan that you might not know.、Um, mm. We're hoping to cover a side of Japan that even people living in Japan don't really know about, and I think could be useful for you if you do live here. However, if you don't live here, it should also benefit you if you're looking for the next thing. If you feel like you're kind of a Japanophile and you've read all the topics about sushi and anime and manga you can handle, and all that stuff's great, we love it. I think there's a lot of people out there covering that probably better than we could. The things we know about,、um, I think, aren't being covered that extensively, at least in English. And I know Matt and I were big into Japan before we actually lived here, and I kind of felt like I hit a wall where there was like nothing else more to learn until I actually got out here. And that was a frustrating time in my life where I just was dying to be out to Japan or go out and visit, and it was hard to find、uh, new information. And once I got here, I was pretty shocked at some of the things that I saw that you know, hadn't really been covered, or maybe just once or twice. And I thought they were pretty interesting. And that someone needs to cover it, and there's no one better than Matt and David to help you out there. Right, and that's us. So <laughs> let's、is. introduce ourselves.、Yeah. Um, my name is Matt,、uh, and I、uh, come from California,、uh, originally born and raised in California.、Uh, I lived in South Korea for four years teaching English, and、uh, after、uh, having a terrific experience doing that, And podcasting with my partner David,、um, uh, we ended up moving to J- Japan. Yeah. Although yeah. David moved here before I had, I had. Yeah. I was still in Korea. Yeah, I'm from the States as well. I'm, I'm from Michigan. And t、uh, h wasn't a lot of Japanese culture there at all. I couldn't even find a bowl of ramen anywhere in Michigan.、Um, I tried getting involved in like a Japanese conversation partner program. and... The best they had was Koreans. And that's actually what ended up bringing me to Korea was, you know, I really love the Korean conversation partners I met. And I ended up going out there for Japan. And luckily, Matt came out and we were very like minded. I was glad to meet someone、uh, who didn't just like, like the typical Korean stuff, too.、Um, and that was going a little bit deeper with Korean culture, wanted to know about up and coming music scene going on there, not K pop. And so we actually started a podcast together there. It was called Two Crude Mon Dudes. And it had a pretty good run. And it was,、uh, I think, a great experience for us when we look back on our time in Korea. Yeah. And if, if you like this episode, you, you're welcome to go back and listen to our,、um, our, all the, the archives of the Two Crude Mon Dudes、yeah. episodes. They're still on iTunes. Yeah. You just type in、uh, two, like the number crude, C R U D E, and then M A N D U D E S. Which is the name for like gyoza or dumplings in、uh, Korea. And yeah, it was, it was a great show, but we live in Japan now and it's time to move on to greener pastures. And to be honest, our, our, our lifelong you know, passion and interest has always been Japan. Korea was kind of a surprise, and we were learning when we were there on the spot with the show、uh, where we've been reading and you know, wanting to know about Japan much longer. I think that's common though. I think most people have,、um, they get to see a lot more from Japan than they do from Korea. What do you、uh, mean by that? See I, more? I, I mean, I think in the, the media portrays Japan、uh, yeah. in a, a, like a, you often see like articles in the newspapers about、uh, Shibuya Crossing or、sure. sushi or、um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of Japanese food. A lot of Japanese video games.、Uh, yeah. Anime has taken off in mainstream television. I mean, I children, most of the, mo- the most popular children's shows are 
uh, in the States these days are oftentimes anime programs that have been um, Funny thing repurposed is, for yeah, yeah. <laughs> American they're, audience. They're usually quite old and almost sometimes dead here, though, you know, like a lot of the popular anime. There isn't anything besides Attack on Titan, I think, that's really blown up. Yokai Watch is just getting started, and we'll see if that flops or not. But yeah, but I mean, I, if you, th- I, I've been um, interested in Japanese culture for a long time, and when I got into Japanese culture, it was the '90s, and um, anything you found was awesome, exciting, <laughs> yeah. because it wasn't. Um, and that now you could just turn on Cartoon Network and, and watch, you know, um, probably Pokemon or, or it's easier yeah. to access, right? Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, the internet also helped with that too. Yeah, you know, I, with the um, the world getting smaller. I think it sets the bar higher because there is this expectation. Everyone knows Japan, you know, when they think of Asia. In high schools, they'll have Japanese language programs in the states. Where, like in Korea, you don't know anyone who knows anything about Korea. They can't speak the language, you know. And I think because of that, something I was afraid of the first time I came out just traveling here was a lot of people said, like you were saying, like this 90s boom is done and there's nothing going on in Japan anymore. Yeah, it's the kind bubble of, pop. The bubble pop for the economy, but following that, people are also saying like the cult- culture is dead. And probably my absolute favorite source, you know, for going deeper with Japan was Neo-Japanism. I really respect those guys and everything. To me, that's like my Bible. Like, I worship that site. I've gone back and read all the articles and uh, they're kind of saying on some of their short-lived podcasts that, like, it's dead because they've lived here for a long time and been here for a long time. Or it was dying. Or dying. Yeah. And I got really nervous when I came out. I, I listened to one of those episodes right before my first trip to Japan and I was like, man, they must, it must have been so much better before because it's awesome. Like, I, I can't imagine what they're referring to because it really met all those high expectations I had for it on my first trips out here. And now living here, going on my third year, I'm, there's not a day where I think, oh, I thought this would have been better or that would have been better, you know? It's just really met all those years where I was growing up, you know, a poor high school, college student, wanting to be in Japan but couldn't. Um, and everything's really met what I had hoped. How about for you? Yeah, I was a little bit nervous to come out, to be honest, yeah. because I, I thought that, um, yeah, my expectations were so high. You know, I'd been such a fan of, of um, like, video games and anime and mm. Japanese cuisine, ramen yeah. and sushi, yeah. that, uh, yeah, I was worried once I came out here that it wouldn't, it wouldn't meet that, that image that I had of Japan. And I think... Um, one thing that helped that is I did take a trip here about five or six years ago, and that was my first trip to, to J- Japan, and it met those expectations. I went to um, Tokyo. That was my first trip to Japan. And, uh, yeah, it just was in- incredible to see, like, the the nightlife, you know, in Shibuya or Harajuku, you know, and to um, go record shopping and um, see, like, video game culture and Akihabara and st- it was just a um it was an awesome experience it was something that stuck with me and it and it really made me it solidified um my love for the country mm. it just made me want to come here more yeah. and I still even after that trip I think I still had like a little bit of um trepidation you know because vacation's I mean, always great right but vacation living is somewhere great is... but when you live somewhere you hear that it's much harder to get um jobs or set up you know when when i started working in korea it was very easy they hired me they rented an apartment for me they flew you out there you know they flew me out there they paid for my flight um they gave me like a little uh stipend you know mm-hmm. um so i had some money um you know, when you come to Japan, and especially if you're doing teaching, like uh, that's what I'm doing, um, uh, they they don't pay for any of that. You have to get your own apartment. You have to buy all your furniture. You have to get. Um, you have to have money <laughs> yeah, yeah. because when you rent your your apartment, you might have to pay um, like uh, some extra expenses, like key money and. Um, an extra month of rent, you know, so it's you, the same you, as any probably first world country in the world that you'd move to, but Korea had set the bar in terms of ease so high. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's like college round two in Korea, like having rich parents at college round two, it's everything set up for you and 
it's a pretty stress free life. Yeah, I, but I mean, it was nice, <laughs> you know. It's nice. I, I mean, you, you, I was nervous about coming out here and um, and getting set up, and and it was difficult when we first got. Uh, luckily, we had you and your wife, yep. and you guys were gracious enough to let us stay with you, and you know. Yeah, uh, and we found our jobs and then when we moved, um, we moved to some shared housing for a month mm-hmm. and then we got, that could be a whole, that our, could be a whole episode too. It was like shared, yeah, housing. shared housing was great. Yeah. Japan. We I have some stories yeah, from yeah. our shared housing. So look forward to that. I think we should also mention, I think the location that we're in Japan really suits the idea of not your normal angle on Japan, trying to kind of cover the underground stories. Right. Um, we're coming from Kansai, which is Osaka, Kyoto, Kobe. And so typically when you're reading stuff, it's regarding Tokyo and Matt lives in Osaka, I live in Kobe. So we definitely like know those two areas very well. And we both love Kyoto, like going there. Um, So I think we're not really concentrating on those areas, but we have been influenced by living there. So we'll be telling you that it's not really that expensive to live in Japan because where we live isn't that expensive. Yeah. Tokyo is, but... If you lived in Tokyo, you'd be, <laughs> yeah, so you'd be broke. So you'll hear, you'll hear those I'd people you'll hear those people complaining about prices and stuff, but you probably won't hear us saying that. And uh, again, we might focus a little bit on some of those cities. Uh, definitely, our second episode that you should get excited for is focusing on a specific part of town in Osaka. Um, but I think we're gonna be a little bit more general and just talk about you know Japanese culture. Um, we might even do some Tokyo stuff. I'm very passionate about Tokyo, even though I don't live there. And there's some neighborhoods there I really like, and I'd like to do some episodes about. Yeah, yeah, I would too. I love Tokyo. Mm. It's great. Shall we get to our segment? Do you have anything you want to say before we get to our first? Well, I, I do want to tell our listener, we are sitting right next to the uh, the subway station. Yeah. Or it's train station. We're, act- we're, on, we're actually yeah. on the beach about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. And... Uh, I love the trains in Japan. I at least like hearing the sounds of it back when I would listen to podcasts and stuff. So, I don't know. I thought, hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not too distracting for you guys. But I wanted you to get some of the, you know, the actual sounds of Japan. Not just uh, two foreigners talk- talking. Talking. Yeah. I like hearing us talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think all podcasters probably do. <laughs> that's that's why you have to do it. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I think having the, the sounds of, um, you, you can't see the sights. Which is mm. a beautiful night out here. But um, we are hoping to get something like that. Uh, we have a good friend, Tom, who's quite good at being a little director and what do you call it? Video, videographer? What would you call the art of taking video? Uh, film? C- cinematography. Cinematography? Yeah. Uh, no, well, that's, that's a, actually the art of setting up the camera. Well, Tom's good at that. He's good. He's good at, at, he's good at cameras and video. Matt and I aren't. We like watching them. We don't even know what the terminology yeah, is. Yeah, so you can tell. But he's going to hopefully make some like accompanying episodes that you'll be able to find on, on YouTube. And uh, so look forward to that for seeing the visual of Japan. But until then, you'll just have to hear our sweet, luscious voices. All right. Well, um, with that, why don't, we, uh, why don't we go to the break? And then when we come back, uh, we'll tell you a little bit about our histories yeah. and how we got into Japan, Japanese culture. Enjoy these sweet Japanese sounds coming your way from Japan 2.0. Peace. We're back, hey. and um, yeah, we we have a, a segment every episode, and it, the segment will change. We'll talk about um, things that we feel are helpful to listeners, and um, things that interest us. Mm-hmm. But don't uh, worry, because they'll be like they'll be repeating, just not every episode. Every, right, right. Every couple, you get the same. We have a lot of different segment ideas for segments, and what we'll do is we'll switch them up. So you guys won't get bored. Don't want to be bored. No. And uh, uh, David has um, uh, has our is going to do our first segment, and uh, it's called "Know Your Chain." Yep. Uh, so, why is it called "Know Your Chain"? It's called "Know Your Chain" because Japan has a lot of franchises or chains that, again, you might not know about 
even if you are reading everything there is out there on Japan, checking all the normal sites. Uh, again, it wasn't until I got here that I knew. I before I came out, let's say like I knew Yoshinoya, right? I knew Family Mart and Seven Eleven, of course. But there's all these other places. I was like, whoa, these are like the same kind of place, and they're all over the place. But why doesn't anyone ever talk about them back home? So Matt, I think Matt had a great idea for this one. And I was really excited about it. And for me, the first place that came into my mind, it was really easy, and I think it's great for an introduction episode because it's probably a place you would see. In a, I don't know if touristy is the right word, but it's a perfect place to buy gifts for people. I wouldn't say touristy. Yeah, I, I feel like um, it's a very niche. It's like has a niche audience. It's niche. I would I would compare it to um, a place like Spencer's in the United was, States. Which right. is, I think of that too, but I think that could really turn okay. people off. Cause so I, Spencer's <laughs> is a place that sells like very um, I, I crude, guess blue, yeah, crude. Uh, <laughs> toys or yeah. greeting yeah. cards and stuff. They have posters and they have stuff for like uh, yeah. very niche. But Spencer's is like low class, really vanguard. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. kind of artsy. Okay. So it is, no, Spencer's is the best comparison if you are from North America. But don't be turned off by that because I hate Spencer's, but I love okay. Vanguard. Okay, it's a knickknack store. Yeah, and and it's called Exciting Bookstore. <laughs> is what it is. And I had actually heard of it before I came here, but no one described what it was. And I was like, like an Exciting Bookstore. Okay, yeah, I'm probably not gonna plan that into my schedule but I came upon it not really knowing what it was and the second I walked in I just fell in love if you feel that you again know everything about Japanese culture this is the place to go to learn about new stuff if you know about all the basic stuff you know they do have Dragon Ball and they do have One Piece and they have the bands that you're gonna know and the main books you're gonna know but there's so much more and I go about once a month and I think that's the perfect amount of time to go because every month there'll be new stuff in there um yeah, if you go every week, you know, there, there's not that much new going on. But, yeah, about once a month when I think I know everything about Japan, I find an awesome band, you know, that I hadn't heard of before. And there's, like, 20 bands playing in there. Every little corner has their own. You got the rock, hardcore rock, hardcore hip-hop. You know, you have your J-pop. They're representing what's going on. Um, there's a skateboarding section in there. It's like anything that has a, like, cult following they have their own little corner in this place. Yeah, they have kiosks that show um, like um, music, and usually the music is from Japan, but sometimes it's from um, around the world, it could be Europe, from Australia, yeah. or but, it, um, but it's always very niche. It always has this great and, yeah. like curation. I would love to meet the people behind the place, yeah. even with the comic books and stuff. Like if you want to get. Um, uh, American comic books in Japanese, they have those there. If you want, um, they're really into like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> yeah, they have, usually have Any, a really big anything section. Anything that's kind of brash and loud, you know, and again has this like cult following. I, I kind of just like want to like walk you through like my local one. They're all laid out differently. Some are better than others. Every major town would have one, right? So I think a big um, city. Any any yeah. place that has like malls. So Kobe has sometimes they're in the mall. Kobe has two. There's one really good one. Osaka's got to have like three or four. Yeah, we have, yeah. I just found one today okay. that I've never, never been to. What area? Uh, it was Umeda? in Umeda. Yeah, yeah that, that one's really good. Well, um, there was two. There's the one by the Tower Records, and then there's also another one that's uh, like underground. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, they're all over the place. And definitely a future episode that I want to do is about uh, Shimo Kitazawa, which is the neighborhood of Tokyo. And this is where that bookstore is from. And it really sums up that neighborhood nicely because the whole city is like this bookstore. Uh, but, um, yeah, like when you walk into mine, for example, you walk into your right and there's like all these like um, American candies there, like staples of American candies, like Sour Patch Kids or like N.W. Root Beer. And then they're always selling vintage card sets. And I'm not like a card kind of guy. I don't like magic or anything. But they have like the Home Alone 2 pack of Topps cards from 1992 that have never been opened. They even have a gum inside. They have Ninja Turtles, Beavis and Butthead, Alf. Like these are all not reprints or anything. Like I don't know how they get this stuff. And they're selling it for like a dollar or two. It's not like it's upcharged really high. Um... And I guess it's kind of like a guilty obsession of mine, but they're always playing like really like kind of trashy like club music in this corner to the left. But I don't know, for some reason I kind of like it because it, I'm excited to be in this store. It kind of like gets me amped up to be in there. Um, they'll sell like Manic Panic hair dye, if you know what that is. Purple and greens is like the only place to get crazy stuff like that. If you keep going through, then there's a skater section, which I'm also kind of into. And yeah, it's not like really like great 
brands and underground brands, but it's just cool to see it paired with all this other stuff. Uh, they have like a little military section with camo. There's a video game section where they have a lot of Dragon Quest stuff and Mario stuff. Yeah, they just have knickknacks. Yeah. Um, really great books. The magazine collection is awesome. Like, really good fashion magazines and just travel magazines. And cooking they're not, magazines. Yeah, they have not a, your normal. You can't like find it at the Kambini. You know, it's like a little bit more artistic. Yeah. There's like hippie section with good incense selection. There's a bag section with, you know, 30 different kinds of backpacks. And they're all the, the cool The food brands. section. If you ever yeah. wanted to get like Street Fighter curry or yeah. blue blue colored curry, mm. you could get that there. But they also have like um, kitchen items. Mm. And, yeah. if, you, if you go upstairs and there's patches along the wall and there are always cool patches upon jackets there. Um, then like for me, all the manga and stuff is upstairs. And again, yeah, they're kind of the staples, but like... Uh, they they have very niche manga as yeah. well. We like love our our favorite mangaka is um, Tayo yeah, Matsumoto. We'll have to do a whole episode about him. Yeah. Too. yeah, and we'll definitely do a whole episode on his work. But um, they carry all his stuff. They'll have like his special one-off art books. You know, it's yeah. not just the manga. Um, I love Akira. There's always a Akira section with again really rare you know art books done by the the writer of that. Then they have some kind of there's like you know they cater to the girls too. There's, like, girly sections that'll have, like, flowers and... Uh, in, in mine, they had, like, uh, lounge music versions of all the yeah, Sailor yeah. Moon songs. Yeah, they always that have, pretty like, cool. this little... I almost bought that CD yeah, just huh? because I thought that was so cool. Do you know the songs well? I only know the theme. I know, yeah. What's the theme? I think it's the theme just You're done the in different, like, Bossa Nova oh, okay. and <laughs> different versions. Yeah, they have just, like, diffusers to like where those aroma diffusers and I don't know how to put it it's like, I guess it's kind of a little bit department story too in certain sections but again it's like funky but it's weird. not like anything you've ever seen nope. you know they'll sell cups and things but it'll be like a cup of a um, shaped like an egg yeah you know or uh, it'll be a cup shaped like um, like a person with a hairstyle like a pompadour right yeah, yeah. and then you take the top off and you drink from it I mean it's not your normal um, cutlery you know and kitchenware mm. and it's not your normal posters you know it's not your normal manga it's everything is just slightly more niche yeah and I I talked to this one guy I know and I asked him he's lived there for like five years and I said is Village Vanguard still exciting for you or is it just because I'm new I asked him this like a year ago he said for him personally, nah, he doesn't go there anymore. It's not exciting. But I'm going on my third year now, and I went in the other day after not going for a while, and I was like, oh, man, is this, is this it? Is this guy's, uh, you know, prophecy going to come true? And, like, I don't know how to put it. I just felt really emotional, and, like, all that love I had, like, my first week being in Japan came back right again, and I realized, like, I guess different strokes for different folks because I'm never going to feel that way. Yeah, Village uh, Vanguard is great. Such a cool place. So if you come out to Japan, whether you're traveling, you moved here, maybe you lived here and never been, uh, you got to go there because it's just an inspiration, honestly. Like on so many, if you like any of the arts at all, I'm always inspired to like, oh man, you know, I should really start a hip hop group or oh man, I should get to writing or do a podcast again. I do a podcast again. <laughs> and there you go. All um, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you got to know your chain. Village Vanguard is where it's at. The exciting bookstore. It really is exciting. It's not false advertising. Yeah. So get out there. I don't know. Google it. Maybe there's some other people talking about it. Check on YouTube. Maybe you can get a walkthrough of the store. But yeah, it's an awesome, awesome place. So look forward to the next Know Your Chain. Yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Know, know your, your chain. 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 All right, well, moving on, uh, Matt had a great idea, which is that we should talk about, you know, where our, our love of Japan came from. We kind of talked about very, very briefly, you know, some things we liked about Japan and where we're from, but we kind of want to go back to that moment where we first realized Japan is, I don't know, a cool place, not just your average country, you know, and where we had to, like, actually get out of the globe and be like, all right, where is this cool place where video games and, you know, all this cool art is coming from so I just talked a ton about the Village Vanguard so I'm going to let Matt go 
Well, um, when I was a little kid, I was really into Weird Al Yankovic. And um, I know this is a weird place to start. Uh, it's good. You know, all all like, good stories start somewhere weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, my dad rented a video uh, uh, VHS cassette for me. And uh, it was called The Ultimate Al. Mm -hmm. And in this video, Weird Al did like a lot of his music videos for a lot of his songs that were hits at the time. Uh, if you could call. <laughs> I mean, he had hits. He yeah, had hits. Yeah, yeah. He had hits. And... Um, some uh, some of my favorite parts were parts that took place in Japan, and when I was a little kid, you know, you don't you see the world around you. You you think like um, there there isn't much outside of like your front door, right? I feel like watching that video. I must have been like six years old at the time, but I would watch that video and rewind the the scenes where I went to Japan over and over and over again. I've watched probably that part more than any other part I probably wore out the rental cassette tape mm -hmm. uh, watching those parts mm -hmm. and uh, in that video he goes to um, uh, the capsule hotels he goes out on the streets of Tokyo and there's all these fluorescent lights and you know and it just looks looks so foreign yeah. and um, you know, living where I did in, in uh, Southern California, there was no place that looked like that. You know, the, the density of people, you know, the, um, the, I mean, it was a weird owl. He went on TV, so of course there were sumo wrestlers and, and geishas, like ironically, like dancing on stage with him, right? Mm. But I just knew it wasn't like where, where I was from. Yeah. And maybe at the time I didn't realize, like, you know, Japan's a place you could go to. It wasn't, you, you know, yeah. even at that age, you don't even know that, like, a movie is... You thought it was maybe fiction, even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't even know how a movie is made. Yeah. So, um, uh, but I think that has to be my er earliest memory, and, and that video always stuck with me, so much so that my first trip to... Um, Japan, I did a lot of the same things that Weird Al yeah. did. Yeah, On purpose yeah. or it just happened? I think it was just like, that's what I I felt like I had to do. Because mm. he, he ends up um, staying in a capsule hotel and I knew I needed to do that. Yeah. 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 Capsule hotels, uh, I feel like they've been covered, but they are pretty special and pretty crazy. And pretty If you don't know what a capsule hotel is, it's basically like you could rent it, it kind of looks like a beehive, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just little rooms stacked on top of each other, and they're about as big as a person, like a. It's like a coffin. Like it's a, a little, nah, bit, little bit much bigger, bigger than a coffin. Yeah, well, I, mean, I thought they're bigger than I thought they would be. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's just a little can, cubby that you go into, and they have a TV and a radio. We're over six. We're it. over six feet, and I could sit up inside there. I think maybe barely hitting my head or almost clearing it. I don't know if I could sit up all the way in the one yeah, I stayed yeah, at. Yeah. yeah. I was in Osaka, was, so maybe it was a little bigger than Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo, maybe it's a little smaller. But mm -hmm. um, but I was still comfortable. I didn't yeah, have any yeah. problems. Some people with claustrophobia don't like those. I have believe it or not. <laughs> slight claustrophobia. No, yeah, it wasn't a problem. Yeah. But, yeah, weird out. Yeah. When, so, when did um, you, like, realize? So you're saying you didn't even know. You thought it was just part of the movie. Like, when did you, like, first, like, you know, get out a map or like be like all right like what is this place well yeah. i think it wasn't long after that um I, we ended up getting a copy of that that cassette tape and i think i um i think i must have looked it up on a map or something or asked my mom where where is japan you know yeah and she showed me hmm. but um and we always had globes and maps in our in our house growing up yeah so um I always, I always knew it was a place. I didn't realize, you know, it was really far away, um, you know, from California. Yeah. Um, I think as I got a little bit older, when I was in my teenage years, I realized, like, oh, yeah, if you're going to go anywhere else in the world, you know, it's like a, a flight, you know, yeah. across the globe. And um, I think Japan was the same way. Mm. And I don't know if I felt like I needed to go to Japan at the time, but, like... I was really into drawing, mm -hmm. and I would copy a lot of the characters from video games, and I, without knowing that my favorite video games were made in Japan, mm -hmm. you know, Nintendo was probably one of the other, the other thing, big things to sow the seeds, yeah, the Japan yeah. seeds in my brain, yeah. yeah. 
Um, but it, I, I think I was a teenager when I realized like you could teach uh, overseas. Yeah. Um, I was probably 19, mm. um, my late teens, and I, when I uh, realized that that's something you could do. And, of course, the first place I thought of was Japan. Yeah. And uh, it only took me, like, <laughs> like 12 years or something to get here. Yeah. But, but we appreciate it so much more because it took us so long and so much work to get out here, you know? Yeah. So mine is actually kind of similar. I, it wasn't easy when you started talking about it. I didn't know exactly where I was going to start. But I was going to start with Nintendo. But I don't think that I actually realized it was from Japan until I watched this pretty famous segment now called Nuts for Nintendo. It was an ABC special, and you can find it on YouTube. You'll find both of our shows that we're mentioning in, in yeah, the show, we'll show link notes. Yeah, we'll when we get the, the website up. Yeah, maybe even in, you can put notes in the podcast. You can have yeah. a link in there. But, um, yeah, it's ironic we both starting with a little, like, TV segment. But, yeah, mine was called John Stosser, I think that's his name. He was Stossel. Like, Stossel, yeah. yeah. And he really kind of focused on, like, this weird Japanese company. And he kept, even the way he said, like, Japanese, he would say it kind of weird. And, like, this the name kind of stuck with me. And I didn't like, go up and look it up right away. But as I was playing the game, so I, I started to, like, realize, like, oh, yeah, these names are kind of strange in the game. Like, I don't know anyone named y- Yoshi or I don't know even like the the director's names and stuff at the end when you'd beat it, I'm like, well, this this is weird. And again, we're so young that like you don't really think about other countries. Or if I did, I was only exposed to really European, uh, where names weren't that different. You know, at least as a little kid, like the spelling of names and stuff. So it wasn't until really like the 16-bit area era that I started to like feel like, whoa, all right, clearly like these art styles and the characters and the like kinds of stories that are going on in these games are like totally different from movies or books that I was reading so probably like 12 years old and I kind of got out of games at that point and I started getting really into art and specifically architecture and I used to go to the library and just read books about houses and one of the architects I liked a lot was Tado Ando who's actually from Kobe and uh, I just his designs were so so simple there's a lot of concrete and yeah, to me, they were just really refreshing and great. And then I started looking up like the streets around these houses and I noticed they were really clean. The uh, tangled telephone wires caught my attention in these photos too. I was kind of a really serious kid. And then I remember getting an encyclopedia and looking up Japan and it just kind of broke down the facts. And I was very, very paranoid. I was a really weird kid. I was really paranoid about crime. And my parents even had to mark off the TV channels that the news would come on because I couldn't watch the news because I would freak out about, like, just random murders and stuff. I thought they would just come kill me for any, like, random drive-by. Um, so I saw these crime rates were low, and then I, like, looked up the country more and learned about people are polite and very formal. And, again, not normal teenager stuff, but I was like, oh, man, I feel like I'd really fit in there. Like, I really like it there. Um... Yeah, and that just kind of got, like, obsessive even until through college. And I used to just tell people all the time, in Japan, did you know, like, a haircut is 50 bucks? And you, like, give them this picture and you draw what you want and they do the exact thing, which actually I've never had happen. And I think another segment we're going to have is misconceptions about Japan. And I'll talk about that one in there. But, um, yeah, that's probably really, really annoying because I used to just go around to everyone and say that kind of stuff to them. Uh, in Japan, you're driving the left-hand side of the road. Simple stuff it started with, but then it got more and more complex. And uh, I think a lot of people just told me to stop talking about Japan. And then I went to this point um, where in high school where I, like, I didn't tell anyone that I liked Japan at all. And I didn't like the association with like anime mm. at the time. And I guess I was too concerned with my image. I went through that phase in high school, but... I would just picture these guys wearing, like, flame shirts with dragons, like those short sleeve dress shirts, you know? Yeah, there's a particular type of guy that and does that in the States. I was, like, embarrassed the girls would think that I was that kind of guy or something. <laughs> I don't know. It just came off as creepy to me saying I'm really into Japan. I think it was before the whole, like, Japanophile craze or anything. Uh, it must have been around the, the anime it, boom. It because, must have, yeah. I mean, I think, I, guess, I think, too, the anime that was coming over to Japan at, uh, or to the States at the time was very... Um, was very violent and very sexual and stuff and I, I i think that when you said like oh yeah i like anime maybe you were talking about or you like japan yeah. you know uh you could be into cowboy bebop or yeah, something yeah. like that but people probably immediately went to oh are you watching 
Yeah. A Ninja Scroll is the one I could think yeah, of yeah. that's like kind of infamous. Because of that, I actually strongly disliked anime and manga for the longest time. Um, I did like Akira. I liked Dragon Ball as a kid. I have a, a cousin who's Japanese, and he introduced me to that very young. Um, but yeah, I just like I didn't really want to like it. Even I guess I just maybe that negative image got to me, which. Again, I should expand out and we have more time because now I, I quite like it, but it is rare. I would say like, you know, one in ten. Uh, yeah, well, I like. like anything, you know, there's there's good anime and there's bad anime. Yeah. There's good art. There's but bad I feel art, like there's know? no one really covering the kind of anime and manga that we like out there. You know, there's a lot of shows for it and that movie, best movie ever or whatever. You know that podcast? The greatest movie. Greatest movie ever. ever. They'll, they'll podcast, occasionally yeah. cover some of the stuff we like, but it's not really like their theme. But maybe we do a couple uh, like our manga or anime selections that, again, there's a lot of people doing that stuff. But I think the kind of taste we have. Um, well, a guy like Taiyo Matsumoto doesn't get a he, lot of mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Um, nah, nah, he doesn't. Yeah, so all. get used to hearing his name because yeah. <laughs> we're both. Tommy Galaxy, yeah. I, li- I like that kind of stuff a lot too. We're both big fans. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. It started with this TV special and yeah, video games, which is kind of cliche. But then I went to this really weird, again, like obsessive, serious area where I was looking up like government and stuff at such a young age. And I guess it was lucky because... I just think it was like my motivation to learn in school. Whenever we were learning something, I'd just be like, well, how does Japan do it? You know, what's it like in Japan? And I'd always look that stuff up. But um, maybe yeah. we should get maybe we should get um, one of the big elephants in the room out of the way. We don't speak Japanese. Neither of us speak <laughs> Japanese. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, neither of us have really spent a lot of time learning. <laughs> I probably spent more time trying to learn not living in Japan than I do living in Japan. Yeah. And yeah, it's pretty embarrassing me for sure i don't know there's no good excuse i guess ultimately it's laziness yeah but i could make a lot of excuses that i'm busy with my job and stuff which i am but um yeah i guess i'm lazy well um my wife and i we we had a discussion about this and um uh, starting tomorrow (laughs) we're gonna start studying japanese to get together Mm. and uh try to do it more often it's good it's our goal I think um, the longer we stay here, the longer we want to stay, and um, and hopefully we could stay <laughs> indefinitely. Yeah. You know, I love I love living here, and um, and one of the things that's going to keep us here is learning Japanese. So, um, I mean, we know a few words here and there. We know our survival we, Japanese. We can survive. You know? We lived here for at least a year, two years, but um, but it's you know. It's it's a good thing to to start doing, and uh, maybe I could give you guys an update on. Uh, yeah, you could talk about the struggles of it, you know, or I can talk about the struggles too. But you can talk about <laughs> yeah. what's going on in your studies. Yeah, because I'm not doing anything to study. Yeah, I'll try my best to um, stick with it, and then uh, hopefully I'll have some good things to report. I think it'll be helpful for the podcast, and it will be helpful for our listeners. Yeah, well, I think it's time we wrap up. We should say that like. We're hoping to do kind of what I would call like bite-sized episodes. Um, Matt and I are used to our old podcasts. We go on about two hours, which yeah. is really fun and great. But I feel like yeah, we're just trying to edit it and be a little more concise. And uh, so we're hoping to hit about 30 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes, I think, for our episodes. Yeah, we're going to try to stay on topic. Once again, we'll have our segments, and then we'll have um, some music uh, at the end. We'll choose a song and um, give a brief description yeah. of it. So we want to tell you where to find us. These things aren't set in stone quite yet. This is our first episode. But uh, you should be able to get us on Twitter at, at Japan. The number two, point spelled out P-O-I-N-T, the number zero. So Japan, P-O-I-N-T, zero. That's at Twitter, our Gmail, email if you want to write us there formally. I don't know if people use email anymore. We got a lot of Can we do it all the same? Yeah, it'll be the same. Yeah. So it's same, just at gmail.com. So the same name there. But yeah, Twitter is probably the best place to get us. Uh, I think it'd be awesome to have like a user segment in the show where people ask questions, you know, we can answer those. If you have any questions, please send them our way. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Yeah. So Matt's got a song chosen for you guys. Get ready to hear the background behind it. Yeah. So the. our final segment will always be be a 
uh, we'll choose a song, a Japanese song. Um, as you guys will find out, we're really big fans of Shibuya K, so there's yeah. going to be a lot of Shibuya K. I have a whole episode about it, actually. Oh, yeah. But this episode, um, I decided to choose something that's a little more... Uh, I, I suppose it could be considered Shibuya K, but it's really hard to categorize because um, it kind of, like, this group in particular it, it f- kind of falls between a lot of genres. Their their name is Citrus, and uh, they're not really well known. We we found out about them from that that podcast we were tell- talking about the Neo Japanism mm, podcast, yeah. Yeah. and um, uh, it's just they have a, a fascinating sound. They're they're a little bit punk rock, but then they also have um, some indie pop. Yep. Um, vibes, you know, like the indie pop singing style. To make another, like, bad turn-off analogy, they kind of remind me of Chumbawamba at times. Not the singer, but the music of Chumbawamba. Besides that one song, if you ever listen to them, the, I get knocked down. <laughs> I don't think anybody's they're, ever they're, heard of no, any other songs yeah, yeah, other no. than the one Chumbawamba Because you bought that, al- you bought that album, <laughs> and then you heard the other songs. They kind of sound like that. It's like, there's, like, these weird layers. It's kind of all over the place. The yeah. drum- drumming is famously, well, famously, if you're in the know, bad. And sing, I don't know, I guess to normal people, it's an abrasive sound, but, and it's an acquired taste. You don't listen to it the first time and go, yeah, that's the greatest thing I ever heard. But it kind of lingers, and there's something you just like, ah, I want to hear that again. There's something about their music that is is very unique. It's not Mm -hmm. typical Japanese pop music. It's not typical Japanese punk music. It's something more, and I felt like uh, there's no better group to kick off our inaugural podcast yep. than Citrus. Yep. What's and, the song? Um, the song I'm going to choose is Young Fidelity. Young Fidelity. Yeah. Um, there's some of their other songs I, are, are, I like better than this, but I feel like this one has an energy to it that, oh. um, that suits an introduction. So please enjoy the song, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks yes thanks for listening and look forward to our next episode or is it one week two weeks it's two weeks yeah that's right two, two weeks. weeks that's uh 10 minutes for us right <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah thanks for listening to japan 2.0 i hope we previewed it well for you guys and got you excited what your appetite a bit and yeah again next best thing to living in japan yeah 2.0 peace out peace.